Movies. Music. Hey, party people of YouTube. My name is Elon Osborne, and this is my channel where I talk about movies, audio, and music. And today I'm reviewing the Aperion Audio Varus 3 Grand V5B bookshelf speakers. If you want more of the specs and what comes with the speakers, I already made a video in which I unboxed the speakers as well as the V6C center channel. So let's dive right in and make a quick comparison. I've already reviewed the less expensive Novus N5B bookshelf speakers from Aperion Audio. Check that out if you haven't seen it. But you might be asking yourself, now why is the Varus line more expensive? Well, first of all, the tweeters in the Novus line are silk dome. The kind that you'll find most commonly in a lot of speakers. But even with that being said, Aperion still builds their own custom silk dome tweeters. So it's not just some run in the mill tweeter that's being used by six other brands too. Now the tweeters in the Varus line use custom ASR silk dome tweeters. ASR meaning axially stabilized radiator. I'm gonna make a separate video about why expensive speakers are expensive, but ASR in a nutshell means the diaphragm of the tweeter, that dome shaped part that you're probably most familiar with, has been pinned or secured on a plane above its own voice coil, which has made it axially stabilized. And by stabilizing it, that prevents it from rocking near its resonant frequency. You know how an opera singer might break glass by singing a certain note? That's because everything has a resonant frequency. And if there are sound waves that hit that object at its resonant frequency, the molecules in that object start to move with greater amplitude. Hence, glass breaking if the sound waves are sustained long enough and have enough power behind them to cause the structure of those molecules to be compromised. So with the ASR tweeter in the various bookshelves being extra stabilized, it allows the tweeter to reach frequencies much lower than most while still producing well into the high frequencies. Long story short, the engineering and science that went into making the Varus line is more costly, raising the price a bit while obviously improving the sound quality. Moving on, the Nova speakers have aramid fiber cone woofers, whereas the Varus speakers woofers and drivers are made with Kevlar. The more rigid the material is, the tighter and more accurate the transient response will be when producing sound waves. Both the Novus and the Varus speakers have gold-plated five-way binding posts with a nifty three decibel tweeter adjustment feature, but the Varus line has two sets of binding posts, which allows them to be bi amped in a nutshell, since these are two-way speakers consisting of a tweeter and a woofer, one, two, the tweeter produces the high frequencies while the woofer produces the low frequencies. And all receivers nowadays have a bi-amping option if you happen to have enough channels to work with. So essentially, you use two amps in the receiver to power your front left and right tweeters and two additional channels to power your front left and right woofers. Depending on your receiver, sometimes you can choose which amps will be used for bi-amping. Otherwise, there are designated channels that can only be used for bi-amping, which are assigned within the software. I'll be making another video soon about bi-amping, how to do it, and if it makes a difference, so be on the lookout for that. And lastly, the Varus line has a more curved shape than the Novus, which helps more with standing waves inside the speaker cabinet itself, but it is harder to manufacture. And let's be honest here, the Varus speakers are much better looking with their high gloss cherry wood veneer or piano black lacquer. You pay more for prettier speakers, since at this level, these are basically like pieces of furniture, not just a regular old speaker box. Just the facts, Jack? Well, now that we got that out of the way, how do they sound? Impressive. The jump in higher quality materials, the more streamlined shape of the speakers, a more substantial bass reflex port, bi-amping, that translates into a richness and a level of detail that edges out the Novus bookshelf speakers, and even more so when bi-amping, at least when listening to music. In all honesty, when I tested out bi-amping in a home theater setting, like when I had a 5.1 setup with these bookshelves as my front left and right, it was less noticeable, but still noticeable nonetheless. Sound effects and music had a tighter presence, 
a slightly better response to dynamic shifts going from quiet to loud or loud to quiet. But if I'm streaming music from my Marantz, it automatically optimizes the setup for music listening, including paring down the mix to come out of just the front left and right speakers. And that is when biamping really shined. It's hard to describe, but what I can say is that it seemed as if finer details were now more clearly heard in the mix. Fingers moving up and down the fretboards on a guitar, guitar string plucking, vocals seem to have this shimmer to them since the high frequencies were being powered independently of the low frequencies. And since the woofer was being powered independently, synth pads, bass guitars, toms, snares seem to find their own place in the mix and not just be jumbled together. This is true with these bookshelves even without biamping because of the level of quality. But music listening in particular just had this sizzle and clearer instrument separation when compared to the Novus line. You see, with higher quality materials, it also adds some depth to your audio. What I mean by that is when you have cheaper materials, it may still sound great, but it's as if all the sound from high frequencies to low hit you all at once, as if the audio was on one flat plane coming at you. But these Vera speakers allowed for a sense of depth to that wall of sound coming at my face. It's like that flat wall of sound now had body to it, thickness, vocals, guitars, piano, drum kit, and even more so when biamping. So if your speakers allow for that, I would highly recommend at least experimenting with biamping. See if it makes a difference in your setup. And there you have it. Thanks for watching this review on the Veris 3 Grand V5B bookshelf speakers from Aperion Audio. Whew, that was a mouthful, wasn't it? Now, if you do want to spend the extra cash on better build quality materials, two sets of binding posts for possible biamping fun, don't forget to use my discount code EO10 at checkout when ordering from Aperion's website for 10% off your purchase. Link in description. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies experience them. And of course, always be listening.